So this is Sir Cypher here, and since that first mission was so short, I'm gonna jump right into the into the second mission here. Seven hundred men died that morning on that uh, tiny strip of sand. Another fifteen hundred wounded, three hundred missing, dragged into the waves. Pearson, Williams, Krasinski. All good men. By sunset, over 156,000 men had come ashore. The invasion had begun. Or, as my CEO used to say, hell opened its gates. The night before, the largest airborne operation in history dropped three divisions of paratroopers behind enemy lines. And their objective was to seize major roadways and prevent a counterattack that could jeopardize the entire invasion. Success on D-Day depended entirely on these men. So, uh, if you've ever played another Relic game, like for example Homeworld or Homeworld 2, you'd probably be familiar with their sort of cutscene style where they have these sort of like animated still images. So, you know, we'll be seeing a lot of that through the, uh, through the campaign. That's what most, for the, through the campaigns, most of them are going to be like that. I think the first mission, that, that CG cutscene at the beginning is the only CG cutscene in the game. Dann fressen es unter aller Kanone. Wird diesen Fraß nicht essen? Bin ich deine Mutter, Arschloch? Dann koch doch dein eigenes Fressen. So, um, like I said, there's a, there's a British campaign. There's also actually a German campaign in the expansion as well. So, you know, if you want to see some Germans, um, just whoop ass over the British and Americans. I'll, I'll probably play that campaign as well after I finish the American campaign. And also in multiplayer, the Germans are awesome. So, it's not just about the Americans and Company Heroes. gun is well defended. Williams, Williams flank, flank it from the right. We'll take the middle. Use grenades when you can. Let's move out. So one thing I just want to kind of explain before I go too farther is that this game is squad based. And that normally you don't have individual men. You have squads. And um, each squad has like its own building menu and all that. Um, and also you can reinforce squads. 
Most American squads have a maximum squad size of six. So, as long as the whole squad doesn't die, you can reinforce it. Uh, you'll see later on, but airborne are kind of a special case in the fact that they can reinforce anywhere. Um, you reinforce them and just more guys just pair drop down, which isn't obviously particularly realistic. So anyway, we need to take out this anti-aircraft gun. Now, uh, there is cover in company perils, whereas where units are sort of determine how vulnerable they are to fire. And when you mouse, you see all these little dots everywhere. And you gotta be careful because cover's directional. Like, for example, uh, you know, if you're on this side of the sandbags and somebody's over here, they can still, sh still the sandbag doesn't help you. But the, the green dots mean excellent cover, and the, the orange dots mean, you know, like, acceptable, kind of like marginal cover. And red means, like, see there's a red on my cursor, that means, like, bad, bad cover. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to have going to have one squad go this way. I'm going to have this squad go here. And I'm going to try and flank them. I'm going to have this squad go to this little sandbag wall over here. And I'm going to have this squad go to this little sandbag wall over here. So, you guys are making it out of the swamp. And uh, just like units have, have uh, a Enemy reinforcement unit builder and stuff, units also have abilities. And um, for example, uh, airborne have, they can throw grenades, they can throw satchel charges, and they have an ability that makes them kind of like move faster and better in combat for a short period of time. But I'm not going to have to use any of these because I got a good flanking maneuver on them. That's one less to worry about. Let's get the hell out of here. The bad news is, there are more of them in this area. We're gonna have to take them all on. Move, move. So. Our objective is to secure this area. The Germans have anti-aircraft sites at these locations. We need to shut them down in order to open up these drop zones. Until a sector is clear of anti-aircraft guns, we won't be able to drop our troops there, and the drop zone will remain closed. In addition, Capture these strategic points to secure additional resources. So, um, from time to time, the game will sort of give you these overview of what you're supposed to be doing. Let's capture that point and take out those AAs. Now, you'll see here, this is, this is a point. And, uh, points are like resources in Company of Heroes. You don't go out and gather resources to make units. You capture points, and by holding those points, you just get resources every second. You can see down here, I'm getting so much manpower, so much munitions, and so much fuel. A as it goes on, it'll be clear what the what the different resources do, but essentially manpower is to build units, or reinforce units. Munitions are to use special abilities. Uh-oh. So, units can garrison in buildings in Company of Heroes. You see we have a unit of airborne here that's being, uh, that's under fire. It says to flank that way. I'm going to flank this way. Let's get behind this wall. So, there's a whole bunch of units there. They got machine guns and stuff. I'm going to go flank on this wall here. So I'm behind this wall, they don't really have too much cover from this area. I'm also going to throw a grenade in here, which costs munitions. Boom, so those guys get blown up. There's more airborne. Um, I can pick up this machine gun there. This road leads straight to our beachhead at Omaha. The landings will not succeed unless we control this road. To do this, we'll need to capture these strategic points. German patrols have been spotted along this road. We'll need some heavy weapons to take them out. 
Aerial recon shows that the Germans have a weapons depot here. We might be able to raid it for some more firepower. So, like in that other video, where if we're gonna take on a column of crowd half tracks, be where I captured that German lines. weapon, we can capture these. Like we can capture this light machine gun here, which you know can just run around with, or we can create capture this heavy machine gun, this MG42, that a unit would uh, Look alive, um, Enemy set up and deploy. But airborne actually have probably the best yes, weapon in the game for infantry that they can just equip normally, that they can upgrade themselves with. It costs munitions, but um, it's the M57, recoil, well, M18, 57 millimeter recoilless rifle, which is like an anti-tank, anti-vehicle um, gun. And if you pick up anything else, then you can't upgrade them with that. And I don't want that, so I'm just going to upgrade all these guys with recoilless rifles. You'll see plenty of chances for me to... Uh, uh, get various special weapons in the future. So I'm capturing this munitions point. Um, another side note is you might see on these units Airborne these little ready. bars right here above their kind of health thing and that's veterancy. Um, units by doing stuff they get experience and they, get, they become better. Now um, not every faction gets veterancy in that way. For example, like the, the Germans, their units don't get experience from combat like the Americans do. Same thing with the British, theirs don't do that. Um, but the Americans, they gain, their individual units gain experience in combat and they get a lot better. So there's a weapons depot over here, I guess. There's a German officer here. I'm just gonna blast them. You can see some of my guys now have these recoilless rifles and they're going to blast this bunker for some reason is that hurt? I'm just going to throw a satchel charge in here it's probably something scripted so I throw a satchel charge into the building it's going to blow up Okay, there we go. Enemy so unit easy. down. I guess you can't kill this bunker. So you notice that um, even though there's all six guys alive in the squad, their health bar is kind of low. That means that individual people in the squad have been injured, but no one's actually dead. So I'm going to upgrade this unit with cordless rifles as well. So, um, there's a secondary objective in this mission where we have to destroy these road patrols. So I'm just going to do that now. I was trying to put mines and build sandbags and be a high speed, but... Didn't have time. So instead, I guess I'm just going to be blasting these guys. I'm going to flank them from here. You can see these recoilless rifles. The guys are loading it right there. They do a lot of damage. They're pretty, they're pretty effective. Enemy unit down. So I think that's most of them, but just to be sure, I'm gonna leave these guys here to damage these guys. Give me a, give me a second to set up an ambush, Christ. So there's, I guess there's another vehicle, more vehicles approaching. Hopefully I finish these sandbags in time. Let's get it done. Paratroopers. So these, these sandbags, stuff like this doesn't take any resources to make. It's like, it's just free. So, it's sort of like if you... Um, it's just sort of like you have to take the effort to tell your guys to build them.
So I'm going to have these guys go out here and put some mines in the road. Which mines, mines actually do cost, they cost resources, but this way if anybody makes it through the, tries to drive through the barrage of sandbags, there we go, they hit the mine, they blew up. So there we go, that was a secondary objective to destroy these road patrols. So that's taken care of now. So, I'm going to capture this point here. Let's move, Paris. At the same time, I'm going to have these guys continue on over here. So this is a machine gun, but machine guns have to set up, and I just blasted it before it can set up. So these guys are pinned down over here, so we're gonna go rescue them. At the same time, I'm gonna have these these guys keep capturing points. So I'm just gonna knit, cut to the chase here and throw a satchel charge inside their little inside their little bunker there. Enemy unit down. Let's just kill everybody. If I get close enough to these guys, then they'll become part of my troops. Infantry reserves en route. Reinforcement proceeding. Oh, I'll go finish this off. Uh-oh, wasn't paying attention here. These airborne are about to die. Full strength in no time. Hopefully they can. Enemy unit down. A slight problem in the fact that all I have left is... There we go. <laughs> Shoot him! Now, get... What are you... Oh my God. There we go. Okay. So they're all dead now. Pick up that recoilless rifle again. So we'll go capture that, and these guys will keep moving along in this direction. Squad. Now our our objective right now is to capture this road, but um, Enemy you kind of gotta you kind of gotta capture everything around the road too. Otherwise, Infantry the guys will just come out of the woodwork and take proceed. the road back from you. So we're kind of coming from both directions here. I think the enemy has a mortar team somewhere, I thought I saw Anyway. Enemy unit down. So we'll keep advancing here. See, there's here's some mortars and stuff I can pick up, but... If these were normal infantry, I'd be picking up all this stuff, but airborne are probably the best infantry in the game already, so there's not really a point in, uh, what is this guy trying to do over here? So there's not really a point in having them pick up all this random crap, because it's just, it's just going to make them less effective. So that machine gunner was coming out of the woodwork, trying to do whatever he was going to do. See, like I said, if you, if you, uh, if you don't capture all these other little points too, all these guys are just going to come out of the woodwork and, and hassle you, so. Enemy unit down. So, it's, you know. Kill that machine gunner before he could set up. I'll capture this road. Airborne replacements. So somehow my guys got flanked here. So let me pull them back. To a little bit more defensible position. Fortunately, like I said before, airborne can reinforce anywhere. They don't have to be in a special location. 
Enemy unit down. This enemy keeps trying to undo all of my hard work. Saw a mortar team kind of run over here somewhere. I don't know where these guys are. All these guys keep coming out of the freaking woodwork. But Enemy unit down. So I'm gonna have these two squads work on the other side of the road, and these guys are gonna finish taking out this side of the road. Stay sharp. Oh my goodness, are you serious? All these jokers coming out of the woodwork. But I know there's another point over here that I need to take care of. Enemy unit dead. Oh, crap. So they have a mortar team right here that's just blasting my dudes. So I'm gonna have to charge across this road and deal with that. These guys are pinned. Um, like I, like I said in the first video, so these guys are pinned right here too. There's certain types of units that if you get hit by them, they make it so your units like can't respond effectively because they're you know crawling in the dirt trying not to die. So these guys are pinned, but if these guys can take out this machine gun like they just did, then these guys should recover. Airborne and I can kill this mortar. So there's a machine gun right here, but I'm gonna kinda come at it from two angles here. I'm gonna throw a satchel charge into their little fortress right here. Which should basically blow up this whole little circle. There we go. Three down, two to go. On me, airborne. Reinforcement underway. So this squad's almost dead, so I'm just going to put it over here. I'm not actually going to reinforce it yet because, uh, as you can see, I only have 26 population cap down here. And each trooper normally counts as one. So I have four squads of six dudes, which is 24, so... I don't want to reinforce that guy. Over here we have bazookas, which I could have picked up if I didn't have recordless rifles. But um, bazookas actually aren't as good in combat against vehicles as recordless rifles are. For whatever reason. I'm not sure if that's like historically accurate or that's just a decision they made when they made this game. But uh, recordless rifles, which only, which only, rifle, which only airborne can get are probably the best, probably the best, like, man portable anti-tank weapon. And, and the reason for that is, is that uh, the German tanks can get upgrades that make bazookas and stuff, rockets, ineffective against them, like, explosive screens and stuff, like, like, they can, they can get upgrades to put stuff on the outside of their tanks, so that, like, if you shoot a missile, a rocket at it, or, you know, bazooka round, it'll, it'll hit the screen and it'll blow up, you know, it won't, uh, it won't impact the hull of the tank. But recordless rifles, they don't do that, they're just like a, like a cannon, so they don't, they explode through stuff. So they're better, generally speaking. So we're almost, we're getting pretty close to, uh, getting done here, except for the fact that... We need to take out this little stronghold right here with all these mortars and such. So I'm gonna try and fight this. No, no, don't don't catch it. Enemy unit down. So you can see I can see there's a little path through the forest here. So I'm gonna just, uh... 
infantry reserves en route. Reinforcement received. These guys head north and just work my way into these, into these trenches. Like I said, with with normal troops, you wouldn't really want to do this. Just like run your guys into these trenches, but these these rifle these airborne now are all like super veteran and and airborne are probably the best infantry in the game. So uh, you know they can do a lot of stuff that other other infantry can't do. Both because they just have really good abilities and also because they're really powerful. So, I guess my population cap just increased probably because I completed sort of like an objective, so I'm going to reinforce these guys and give them coilless rifles. And Airborne replacements are ready to drop. So the enemy's running around trying to recap all these points, but I'm not going to have it. Uh, I could capture this AA gun and crew it. I think I could capture it. No, I blew that one up. I could cap. I, I could have been capturing these AA guns. But like I said, airborne are really good. So there's not really any point in putting them on anything else. Because whatever you put them on is not going to be as good as just... Having airborne, enemy unit. Down. But like I said, on later, on like even the next mission, there's gonna be a lot of like riflemen and stuff that I'll be using, which are the standard American unit, and they're not that great, um, you know, compared to like airborne. So I'll be putting them on all kinds of units. I'll be commandeering all sorts of equipment. So there's another crash plane here. I could pick up these bazookas, but again. Recordless rifles are better, so... To be fair, normally the bazookas do more damage. Um, like, if they hit, they do more damage to vehicles than the recordless rifles will, but... The recordless rifles have longer range, and they... They don't, they don't get stopped by all these, like, countermeasures that the later German tanks have. So, spoiler alert, I already know what I have to do here. I'm going to have to defend this road. So, since I already have this sort of, like, covered, I'm going to start... Oh, my goodness. These units are spawning here just to piss me off. I know there's one more unit of... I know there's, like, one more unit of airborne that I can kind of, like, save... I think Watch it's over spacing. here. Watch for Jerry. One oh one Jerry. Yep. And there's a there's an uh there's an like an achievement Jerry. for it, so I'm gonna try and do that. So I'm gonna build these sandbags here and these sandbags Building here. Detail. On me. On me, airborne. Paratroopers. Let's move, Eagles. Hmm. Huh. Maybe they're over here. Got it. I know I haven't gotten them all. Jerry's waiting. At the same time, I'm gonna put. That's the ball game. This is what I like to see: bazookas and heavy MGs. Take what you can, man. Watch for Jerry. I want someone on point. Dang it! I know there's one more squad of airborne we can rescue, but I'm not sure where it is right this moment. But anyway, so you can put mines in the road. Normally you don't just put them in a big line like this because the normally the point of mines in Company of Heroes isn't to actually like destroy vehicles, it's to like disable their engines so that they can't um Jerry's waiting. They can't move and then you can just close in and take them out with like anti-tank guys. But what the hell, I'm just going to put like 50 mines in a giant line in the middle of the road. So I'll build these sandbags. Put my, I put mines over here too. What the hell? So mines everywhere. So I'm capturing this last point, which is going to get us to the next sort of objective. Good work. The road is secure. 
Watch for Jerry. Jerry's waiting. Construction is a convoy from the 91st Grenadier Division is moving down this road. Our job is to stop them. Recon puts the convoy a few clicks out, so we don't have much time. Use the bunker and anti-aircraft guns to create a kill zone and ambush the convoy. Setting up obstacles and mines will hold the Germans right where we want them. All right. Our boys will hit the beach in a few hours, and they're going to need this road cleared of enemy movement. So the whole point of this, which is, you know, the whole point of the whole airborne thing before the, uh, the Normandy invasion was to keep, um, was, I'm not going to get on, on the AA, AA but, um, was to keep, actually I can, I've got extra meat, I've got extra, Paratroopers. no, no one's even going to get over bounce. here, yeah, no, no one's going to make it this far, trust me, <laughs> yep. um, it's just to make sure that the Germans couldn't, uh, couldn't airborne. like mount an effective counterattack after Eagle after the initial assault. Watch for Jerry. So Construction detail. That's what I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to secure this motherfucking road. And um as you're gonna see it's gonna be pretty effective. Airborne now. Um we have a minute of time left. We don't really need a minute. I have put these guys over here. I, I have kind of a pet peeve in that I don't like to garrison units in bunkers. Or I don't I don't really like to garrison units, period. Let's get it done. Because on me. Ah damn it. And that's the ball game. Construction I don't like the garrison units in buildings because there's certain things, that, there's certain types of weapons that are really effective against units in buildings. And so even though you're kind of vulnerable if your troops are out of buildings because they don't get as much cover, I don't, I don't normally don't like to put my units in buildings. I just kind of keep them out in the open. Here they come. Let's go. Move no, don't run across all those mines I put in the middle of the road. What the fuck are you guys doing? Prep for battle. Jerry's watch your spacing. 101. Oh my goodness. Why were you guys standing in the middle of the road? <laughs> so yeah, this convoy. Not not doing too well. A little late on the open fire. The reason why putting mines in a giant line, like I said, is that. Vehicles go out of control sometimes when you... No. <laughs> Vehicles go out of control sometimes when they get killed. And so, you know, they'll hit the first mine and they'll, they'll basically be destroyed. But they'll go out of control and then they'll detonate all your other mines. So it's kind of like every mine besides the first one just becomes a waste. Like you see this one half track just blew up like 12 mines. See, this thing's out of control, which basically means it's destroyed, but, um, you know, it's just driving. So yeah, I could have captured, I could have put some guys on this anti-aircraft gun down here, but it's not, it's not really going to be an issue. <laughs> Airborne are very tough dudes. Infantry reserves on route. Reinforcement proceeding. Enemy units down. So what what you see these exclamation points are these units are retreating. Which is something you'll see in the next mission is a thing that you can do. Um, which basically it it allows your units to like run back to their HQ and while they're doing it they get all these bonuses to like to dodge.
boat secured from here to Omaha Beach. Hope Babel Company appreciates what we've done for him, sir. They will, Sergeant Kuroda. They will. So that was the second mission, and hopefully you got a little bit better I What do you mean, secure mission? This is balls. I captured every munition sector. I guess the game kind of bugged out there. But anyway, um, uh, as you can see, you, there's this, this was a little bit slower, so it's a little bit more involved. Um, but it was kind of... I didn't really have to use too many tactics, because all you do is use airborne, which are basically the best, the best infantry unit in the game. But after this, we're going to be using um, riflemen mostly, which require a little bit more finesse because they're not they're not quite the powerhouses that airborne airborne troopers are. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And after this, after the next map, I'm going to start uploading some multiplayer games, and uh, so you can get an idea of what it's like to play online. And hopefully, it'll interest you in maybe getting Company of Heroes or Company of Heroes 2 when it comes out. All right, thank you, and have a nice day.